Okay, Dan's gonna set the wheel chocks. Okay, we're gonna disconnect the trailer, but first we're gonna have to uh, drop the front jack. Dan pulls the pin, lets the jack down, and starts to crank up on the, uh, on the tongue. Once the load is off the trailer hitch, we'll pull it away. When the trailer is disconnected from the tow vehicle, uh, it's very smart, if not necessary, all the way around to stabilize the trailer using the uh, three-point or th yeah three-point uh, leveling system. Okay, now Dan's going to make the connection, five-inch supply hose connection, and we're good to go on the supply side of this. We have some hose going off to an engine. The next thing we're going to do is fill this tank uh, halfway or three-quarters of the way with just plain fresh water. What we're going to do now is just add some. Uh, Knockdown, that's uh, National Foam's uh, super concentrated Class A foam. It actually makes excellent training foam when you dilute it about five or six times with water. But this pressure gauge here is marked at 100 PSI and marked at uh, 200 PSI. At 100 PSI is the pressure that we operate the deck gun at and 200 PSI is the pressure at which we operate the foam adductors on. More on that later. We're about ready to start flowing foam now. What we want to make sure that we've done here is to make sure that the tanks are vented. In this particular case we have a optional automatic venting system on this tank which will allow uh, air to go into the tank at the rate at which we pull it out. Today we're going to be drinking foam out of this tank at about 15 gallons a minute. That's 500 gallons a minute of solution or 30 gallons a minute which would be in this case a thousand gallons a minute of three percent solution. So it's very very important that these tanks are vented. If they're not vented before we put one of these big guns in service you can easily collapse the tank. We're ready for water again. Dan's going to manually open the electric valve. He has the option of doing it manually or electrically in this particular model. And we're discharging at about 500 gallons a minute now. Now Dan's going to take the electric remote control and he's going to go off someplace where you can see where this stream is going and actually operate it from the remote control. Now Dan can be as much as 600 feet away as he does this. And as you can see the footprint that it makes in the middle of the road is quite large. The gladiator nozzle aerates the foam as it comes out. This is a built-in aerator. So again from a point of safety the operator can dismount the trailer and operate this nozzle from as far as six maybe seven hundred feet away from a place of safety. Particularly if he's running out of breathing air it's a good idea to be able to dismount this thing and stay safe. Now Dan's going to go through the shutdown procedure. He signals to the driver operator to bring the engine to idle. And then he closes the intake valve. Okay, now Dan's going to make an inch and three quarter hose connection at the TFT foam adductor. Now notice we have a pressure gauge on the outlet of this foam adductor and that little pressure gauge is going to tell us whether or not we have a go or no go situation here uh, when it comes to foam concentrate proportioning. What we're going to do now is go to the uh, hand line operation. We're going to take a, uh, a low pressure 75 psi TFT mid force out and the matching uh, MX foam jet attachment for it. And we're going to make it fast to the end of this hose. And for the sake of this training exercise, we're only using 50 feet of hose. Uh, we can go 300 feet between the foam adductor outlet and the nozzle inlet uh, using inch and three quarter hose and a 75 psi nozzle. Now Dan is going to attach the uh, MX foam jet attachment to the nozzle. Whenever we're dealing with uh, uh, alcohols, polar solvents, blended gasoline, particularly E85, there is no getting around it. You have to use aerating equipment. What Dan's going to do now is charge the foam concentrate line 
to the foam adductor. This 95 gallon a minute adductor is now going to get charged at the Y. When Dan charges it, since there's no back pressure against this adductor, the adductor is going to instantly start drinking solution and fill this fire hose with solution. If this was 200 feet long, it would take about 18 to 20 seconds for the solution to arrive at the nozzle. Since it's only 50 feet, uh, that time is uh, a lot less. And he's going to just discharge foam solution. Now to give you an idea what's going on with the TFT nozzle and how it aerates foam. So he goes from straight stream towards fog and as he does that he changes the proportioning or changes the aeration ratio back to straight stream. Okay at 95 gallons a minute at engine pressure idle the system works. We are probably someplace around 110 psi. Since the hose is so short and the nozzle is in the low pressure setting, the foam adductor still works, even at such low pressure. The system works ideally at 200 psi. What Dan's going to do now is he's going to put the uh, 300 to 1250 gallon a minute TFT show flow in the inlet of this. And again, since this is a training exercise, we just want to see what the, uh, the flow rate is. He's going to orient the meter at about the 9 o'clock position. And when the line gets charged, it'll twist to the right and it get longer. So he's anticipating that. Now he's going to connect the hose line to it. Okay, what Dan's going to do now is make a connection to the 350-gallon-a-minute uh, foam adductor. He's going to connect the fire hose line, in this case it's a two and a half, uh, to the blitz fire. We prefer three inch or larger diameter hose for this long distance. Then he's going to open up the valve to the concentrate. And he's good to go. Okay, what Dan's going to do now is charge the line to the blitz fire. Uh, the blitz fire is an oscillating version, so he's got it set in a uh, 40 degree pattern. And as you can see, it's going to start sweeping. Now we're going to bring it to 200 PSI. And there we are at 350 gallons a minute on a 40 degree oscillation, 20 degrees either side of center. We're aerating at about 7 to 10 to 1 with this new TFT foam aerator tube that goes on the uh, blitz fire. This can be uh, up to uh, 500 feet away from the uh, trailer using the right size hose. Uh, using 4 inch or 5 inch hose you can probably be 1200 to, I don't know, as much as maybe 2000 feet away. Uh, how do we figure these out? We just look at the chart that's on the foam tank. That's a hose and flow distance chart. And it goes from inch and three quarter hose all the way to five inch hose with various foam adductors. So the outlet pressure gauge on this foam adductor is firmly in the green, telling me that uh, I don't have any back pressure problem. If the hose was too long or the valve on the blitz fire was being closed for whatever reason or the hose diameter was too small, this pressure gauge would find its way into the red. Once it gets into the red, the pickup tube stops sucking. So this is pretty much our go-no-go -no -go gauge for this foam adductor. Now Dan's going to shut it down. The pump throttles down first. Once we get the pump to idle, then Dan closes the supply valve. And we are back to zero flow. In order to flush the appliances we first have to shut the foam tanks off. The front and rear tank. We do not want to send water back into our foam concentrate. Now that that's done, 
we are ready to start the flush procedure. With the uh, water pressure now at uh, 60, 50, 60 PSI, what Dan is going to do is press the button on the TFT self-flushing foam adductor, and he's going to flush out the line that's going into the 350 gallon minute adductor. Now what we're going to do is flush the gladiator's metering valve. Uh, Danny puts the hose line back on it and goes back to press the button. And he presses the button, and sure enough, we've defeated the check valve in that foam adductor. We're allowing fresh water now to flow through the manifold, and it's coming right out through the front of the nozzle. Now in order to flush the uh, hose and nozzle of foam solution, Dan's just going to open the nozzle on the TFT, and we have shut the foam proportion of valve off. So it's not sucking anything into it. And we're just letting fresh water run through that system. And again, under normal circumstances, I would suggest that you do this for a good two minutes. Okay, in order to flush the foam inductor itself, sets it at 3%, disconnects the hose from the manifold, and presses the button. And the foam inductor is now flushing. Okay, to stow the monitor, what Dan is going to do is bring the monitor around to the front and then set it all the way in its down position. When the monitor nozzles all the way down against its firm stop, it prevents it from jostling and bouncing up and down in transit. So that's the stow position for that monitor. So this pretty much concludes what we were uh, sharing with you today regarding putting this trailer in service. Of course, this is a quick thumbnail version of it. The uh, real world has a checklist of things, step by step, uh, for the operator to do. Uh, so there's no mistakes about this, so you don't have to just rely on a videotape. So as we're putting our stuff away, uh, we'll bid you goodbye.